And now onto our dinosaur of the day, Ornithomimus, which was a request from PaleoMike716. I chose this one for this week partially because it's a really bird-like dinosaur. And again, last year's episode was very bird-themed, so Mm -hmm. we've continued it at least one more year. Ornithomimus was an ornithomimid theropod that lived in the late Cretaceous in what is now North America, Canada, and the U.S. It looked somewhat like an ostrich. It walked on two feet. It had a small head. It had a relatively short torso. Its body was covered in feathers, and it had a small, toothless beak. It may have been an omnivore. It had three toes on each foot, long arms, and a long, S-curved neck. Yeah, very ostrich-like. All of those things could be a description of an ostrich. Yeah. Just as much as it could be ornithomimus. Plus the hollow bones, and it was a fast runner. It had large eyes and a large brain. The brain's a little different from an ostrich. (laughs) It probably had good vision, and the large brain may have helped it move fast. It had straight hand and foot claws, and its fingers were about the same in length. The hands looked sloth-like, and Henry Osborne thought that they may have used their hands to hook branches when eating. As sloths do. Yeah. As for size, there's two species of ornithomimus, and they vary a little bit in size. There's the... Type species Ornithomimus velox, and then there's the second species Ornithomimus edmontonicus. Gregory Paul in 2010 estimated that Ornithomimus edmontonicus was about 12 feet or 3.8 meters long and weighed 370 pounds or 170 kilograms. Ornithomimus velox was about 20% smaller. The genus name Ornithomimus means bird mimic, and it refers to its bird like foot. Charles Marsh named Ornithomimus velox in 1890 based on a foot and part of a hand found in Colorado in the U.S. The species name velox means swift. When Marsh first described Ornithomimus, he compared it to ostriches and turkeys. Hey, pretty good. Yeah. The fossils were found in 1889 by George Lenman Cannon, and they were found near a small white schoolhouse with chicken coops around it. (laughs) 17 species have been named Ornithomimus, but most of them have been reassigned to another genera or they're considered to be dubious. This happens a lot with dinosaurs named around that time. Yes. Bone Wars. It was all name, 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 name. Oh, most of those were not real. (laughs) Well, Marsh, in the same paper, he named Ornithomimus velox, named Ornithomimus Tenuous and Ornithomimus grandis, based on fragmentary fossils that John Bell Hatcher found in Montana. Grandis, by the way, is now thought to be Tyrannosauroid fossils. And tenuous, like tenuously naming. (laughs) Oh, I didn't think about that. (laughs) (laughs) And Marsh also named Ornithomimus sedens in 1892, based on part of a foot, and that's now thought to be alvarosaurid material. Lawrence Lamb named Ornithomimus altus in 1902 based on some hind limbs found in Alberta, but this became Struthiomimus in 1916, and we talked about Struthiomimus in episode 270. Yeah, Struthiomimus, that's usually my go-to when I'm trying to think of what an Ornithomimid looked like. Yeah. Especially a big one. And there were a lot of other species named that are no longer valid. I won't read them out, but (laughs) if you want to read them, they'll be in our show notes. Yeah, on our website. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. Now, Charles M. Sternberg named the second valid species, Ornithomimus edmontinicus, in 1933. That was based on a nearly complete skeleton found in the Horseshoe Canyon Formation of Alberta, Canada. Oh, so we do have not the holotype being very complete, but another Ornithomimus. Yeah. For years, it was hard to distinguish Ornithomimus from Struthiomimus. Then in 1972, Dale Russell did a study that found the differences between the two and also found Ornithomimus velox and Ornithomimus edmontinicus to be valid and then reassigned the other species and created new genera, including Dromesiomimus, which means emu mimic. Struthiomimus, just in case you wanted to know some differences, had a longer torso and longer arms. Russell also said it was hard to tell the difference between Ornithomimus velox and Ornithomimus edmontinicus. Donald Bard and Jack Horner in 1979 thought that there were two leg bones that were found in New Jersey by Joseph Lady in 1865 to be Ornithomimus, and they named that one Ornithomimus antiquus. (laughs) The antique Ornithomimid? Yeah. (laughs) Now, originally those bones were named Coelosaurus antiquus, but Baird and Horner found the name Coelosaurus was already in use for a dubious animal that was named based on one vertebra. 
that dubious animal was named by an anonymous author in 1854, and we now know that that anonymous author was Richard Owen. Hmm. Donald referred more specimens that were found in New Jersey and Maryland to Ornithomimus antiquus. And then in 1997, Robert Sullivan found Ornithomimus velix and Ornithomimus edmontonicus to be junior synonyms of Ornithomimus antiquus. He found that velix and edmontonicus were difficult to tell apart, and they both shared features with antiquus. But in 2004, David Weishampel found that Ornithomimus antiquus, or Solosaurus antiquus, was a nomum dubium. Yeah, that was surprising. They went back and gave it a species name that predated the other ones, and then they got referred to that species as an unusual way to do it. Yes, and since then, there's been more lumping and splitting, including between Ornithomimus and Dromesiomimus. In 2015, Leon Clayson's and Mark Lowen re-described Ornithomimus velox. They fully prepared the holotype. Apparently the holotype wasn't fully prepared before that. Weird. Then they 3D scanned it and did photogrammetry. They wrote, quote, Interestingly, many of Marsh's published drawings of Ornithomimus velox illustrate anatomical detail that was not visible until its recent preparation, and several of the details of these obscured parts in his illustrations are misleading and incorrect, end quote. Good thing they finally prepped it out. Yeah. So the holotype of Velux is likely skeletally mature. They found that Marsh's referred specimen for Velux was also part of the holotype. Turns out it's the same individual. The Ornithomimus Velux foot is more robust than Ornithomimus edmontinicus. Because of its small size, especially compared to other Ornithomimosaurs, they said, quote, Ornithomimus velix may represent the first instance of nanism in this group, end quote. Nanism? Yeah. Meaning being smaller? Yes. Since, yeah, it's, it's smaller than Edmontinicus. Now, four Ornithomimus Edmontinicus specimens have been found with feathers. There were feather imprints found in sandstone. Two of them are adults with traces of feathers on the arms, and one is a juvenile with feather impressions covering the lower back, legs, and neck. Awesome. I don't think I knew that. I didn't either. That we had direct evidence for Ornithomimus having feathers. That's super cool. It is. Two of the adults have more complex feathers on the arms, which means that the feathers changed as Ornithomimus grew up because the juvenile is covered in filamentous type feathers. The fourth specimen found had feathers along the tail that were crushed and distorted, but it looked really similar to the feathers of an ostrich. And there were also skin impressions, which showed no scales on the mid-thigh to the feet. And there's a flap of skin connecting the torso to the upper thigh. And this is also similar to ostriches. In 2012, there was a study that found Ornithomimus edmontinicus to be covered in feathers at all ages, all growth stages. Hmm. And they found the patterns on the feathers to be similar to ostriches. Well, Marsh nailed it 120 years ago when he said he thought it was like an ostrich. He didn't exactly say he thought it was like an ostrich. He was just comparing what he knew about ostriches and turkeys to okay. Ornithomimus. So based on the feather patterns in the bare skin and the legs being similar to ostriches, for Ornithomimus, they probably used both for thermoregulation. Meaning they use their bare skin as well as their feathered parts for thermoregulation? Exactly. Cool. There's more to Ornithomimus than I thought there would be. Very, yeah. Very interesting. So very ostrich-like. <laughs> yeah. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash or click the link on the left.